All right. All right, everyone. So I just got the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip. Are you excited? What are your feelings? <laughs> Beautiful. <gasps> Charger and all. Perfect. Look how small this is compared to yours. I know. Okay. Um, if you could tell Steve Jobs one thing, what would you say to him? Okay. Um, <laughs> something offensive. <laughs> <laughs> this is really small. Okay, okay, let's look at, ooh, ooh, love the screen design. Yeah, it's like a new texture. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Look at you. And I wanted to show you guys how usable this thing is for filmmakers specifically. So we're gonna be testing out the playback speed in H.265, 10-bit H.264, as well as ProRes at higher resolutions, 4K, 6K, at uh, 50p, at 25p, and see, you know, see what this thing can do. Um, one of the things I wanted to know is what kind of external drives work well with the Mac M1. And the Samsung T5 has been very respectable, works very well. I did find the, uh, I believe, SanDisk Extreme Pro um, external drives, the ones that have like a 1000 megabit um, read and write or close to that, those did perform better, but this is really holding up and all the tests I'm doing today is on the T5. So anything better than the T5 is just gonna be icing on the cake, but this works well. And I can confirm that um, like a Samsung 860 EVO works pretty well too. I have one of those that I put in a enclosure that works well. Uh, M.2 drives will work well. If you're using older HDDs, um, that type of drive, you're going to get severely uh, downgraded performance. So keep that in mind. You definitely want to use external SSDs. And the faster, the better. I think there is a cap right now in terms of uh, the USB-C output, but yeah, Samsung T5 works great. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through Premiere and Resolve and checking out the playback in 6K and 4K at H.265, H.264 10-bit, and ProRes and seeing what we get. So let's dive right into this. Um, let's start with 4K H.264 25P at 10-bit. It's really bad with uh, 4K H.264 10-bit. I mean, barely. It's like dropping so many frames, it's useless. Um, let's go to H.264 50p at 4K. Now this is 8-bit. Notice the difference. Now we're getting like almost perfect playback. It's crazy that 10-bit really kills it. Um, let's go to ProRes 6K, and this is 50 frames per second. This is with a lot added and some adjustments. Very good playback. I don't think it's, I think it's dropping some frames, but it's very respectable. Uh, this is at 25p, 6K, uh, ProRes 422. Yeah, great, looks great. Um, now this is 4K H.265 at 25p. Yeah, I mean, this is really good. This is fantastic. That's like a, a lower bitrate H.265 on the Panasonic. Now we're, we're going into 5K here. Um, we're already getting drop frames, but yeah, this is pretty choppy. But it stutters and then it kind of catches up and then it's pretty usable. But if you're de dealing with a bunch of small clips and a timeline, it's probably not going to be the greatest. But it's not too bad. You know, keep in mind there's adjustments on these. Uh, now this is 6K H.265 at 50p. Kind of the same thing. And this is 25p. Pretty much the same. I mean... 
It's so basically you're going to get some delays when you're moving around on the timeline and stuff. It's not perfect, but it's it's fairly fast. Okay, let's go to Resolve and see what that is doing. I mean, I already know because I've tested this. Resolve is quite a bit better, and that's because they've already integrated the program with the M1 chip. Uh, this is the beta version. And by the way, there is a beta version of Premiere, and sometimes for th some things it does work better, but it's so glitchy that it's basically don't even bother with it yet. Wait until they actually do the uh, the final update, the non-beta update. But the beta for Resolve, I mean, you're about to see it. Uh, it's quite a bit better than the latest version of Premiere. So let's throw these bad boys in here. But let's look at the most strenuous potential file here. Um, Let's go to the H.264 from the Panasonic. That was giving us the most trouble in Premiere. Let's see what it does in Resolve. Okay, there's like no drop frames. This is stellar. Um, that is kind of crazy. So let's throw some adjustment on real quick. Um, it's going to look like garbage, but um, here we go. Uh, color boost, uh, mid-tone detail, uh, temperature, let's, there we go. Uh, let's go back, make full screen, and play it. I mean, look, we, we, like, this was so glitchy in Premiere, this is, like, perfect. So let's look at... 6K, H.265, 50P. Um, normally, that would be a pretty heavy codec. Uh, and let's throw some color on here real quick. Or nodes, uh, let's just throw a LUT on. Um, Blackmagic Design, Rec. 709, maybe, no, whatever. Okay, and back to it. Full screen, okay. Yeah, no issue. Yeah, this is smoother because it was kind of making it look like because of drop frames like 24p, but this you can see that very smooth. It's getting all the frames. There's like, it's not dropping frames here. Okay, astounding. So Resolve is way better. Uh, what can I say? Um, up your game, Premiere. I hope they do because I, I, I know how to use Premiere. I'm just tempted to switch to Resolve because... It's a great, it's a great program, uh, and I don't have to pay monthly for it. Um, the the real thing is for photos, I like to have Lightroom, and it's like if I'm if I'm paying for Lightroom, I already have a good deal on the whole package. It's like what's the point? But yeah, I, I actually have Resolve, so I mean, I, I don't need to pay anything for it. It it came with the Blackmagic camera that I bought, so. Yeah, that's that's the bottom line, guys. Resolve works better than Premiere, but either way, both programs are performing very well. Um, much better than my PC did that was around the same price as this. Um, of course, if you have a really beefy PC, you can get some great performance, but just keep in mind the portability of this thing, how small it is, how little power draw. It's pretty cool. Um, some practical stuff I will mention it only has two USB-C out, so I have this little device, this J5 uh, Create, and I've had this overheat, or it appeared to overheat, where like the drives were disconnecting. Um, and I did have it connected to a big TV at that point, maybe that's why. With this current setup, I've had no issues with it, other than this thing getting kind of hot, which I guess is very normal with all these devices. I don't understand why, per se, it gets so hot. It seems poorly designed, but I guess it is what it is. Um, so yeah, it's the jankiness of all these cables and things sticking out. But of course, if you get a bigger drive or you can just edit off of the T5 without any of this, you know, plug it right into here and edit. So it, it can be very portable and small. 
And of course, drives are just getting smaller and smaller. I was shocked how small the SanDisk Extreme Pro was. I had one like a couple weeks ago, but I returned it. Um, I'm probably just going to get another T5. So, yeah, in case you're wondering, this has been shot on the Panasonic S1 in 5K. I'm really blowing through data over there, but still, it's 200 megabits per second. It's way smaller than RAW. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, I have to say, I, I would have no problem recommending this device. Uh, you're going to be waiting a little bit for all the different programs to update to be com perfectly compatible with it. But, yeah, it's perfectly usable right now, and it's only going to get better. Um, we will see a response from the PC manufacturers soon, uh, and that'll be interesting. You'll probably see some stuff that performs just as well as this that's cheaper, and probably bigger screens and all that, but if you don't want to wait, I don't think these will devalue too much. I think they'll hold their value because it is a Mac and it, it's ridiculously good. I mean, I have run 8K B-RAW on here and gotten decent playback in Resolve, so it's impressive. Um, anyways, that's about it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try to answer, but Hopefully that was informative if you're thinking about this as a filmmaker. Uh, peace out and take care, guys. Happy New Year. Late Happy New Year, but it's my first video of this year. First video in a while. So let's hope we have a little bit of a better uh, year. Like and subscribe.